you ever felt like you're speaking English, but no one's really listening? It might not be what you're saying. It might be how you're saying it. Welcome to today's video, where I'm diving into a critical aspect of speaking English confidently. Speaking with feeling. Many non-native English speakers focus so much on getting the words right, perfecting grammar, pronunciation, and vocabulary, that they forget something equally important, emotion. Without it, even the most accurate sentences can sound flat, robotic, and disconnected. This is the first video in a four-part series about how speaking with feeling will increase your confidence using English. Speaking with feeling isn't just about sounding natural. It's about creating connection. When you add emotion to your words, you're not just delivering information. You're telling a story, expressing a mood and inviting others to engage with you. This is key to building confidence in English. You see, it's not always the perfectly polished sentences that make the biggest impact. It's the way you express them. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Grant, and I'm a business English confidence coach. That's what I'm here for is just to help you, help you become confident communicating in English so that you can do whatever it is you want to do. And here, I'm a big believer that to become really confident speaking English, you have to have feeling. And it's one of the things that I find people struggle with is that they don't have feeling when they're not confident. So the sooner you add feeling, the better this works. And by the end of this video, you'll learn a really simple technique to have you start speaking English with feeling so that you can stop sounding like a robot and start speaking in a way that gets attention and builds your confidence in every conversation, whether it's a casual chat or, or a big presentation at work. Stay with me because I'll be showing you a real life example of how to add emotion, tone, and especially emphasis in this video to your speech. These tips will not only help you speak more naturally, but you'll also feel more confident using English in everyday life. Should we get started? Okay. Today, I will focus on two ways to speak with feeling. First, emphasize words that describe things. Adjectives, that's what they do. And second, to emphasize action words, which are verbs. If we can emphasize things that describe and action words, we can take a big step toward speaking with feeling. This is a really simple technique that allow you to practice speaking with feeling using anything you want to practice with. So I encourage you to practice. To practice as you're going through this with me. I know you're all trying to not only learn English, but become confident using English. So use this video as your practice to be able to do that. I'm going to share with you just a simple sample business conversation. And then I'm going to show you how we can take this technique and make this work for you. So here's the, the sample conversation. Let me just go through this with you, where a manager is discussing an outcome of a project with an employee. I'm going to give this to you this way, with no feeling. Manager. Hi, John. I wanted to tell you how impressive your work on the project was. John, thank you. I'm really proud of how it turned out. 
manager. You should be. The way you managed the team was outstanding. John, it wasn't easy at times, but I'm glad the team stayed focused. Manager, yes, and your attention to detail really improved the final outcome. John, I'm just happy that we were able to deliver such a successful project on time. Manager, absolutely. The client was thrilled with the results and they've already asked us to start planning the next phase. John, that's great to hear. I'm looking forward to getting started on the next phase. Boy. <laughs> if you're still here, <laughs> that's horrible, right? That's not communication. That's just not communication. That was an example of a conversation between a manager and some guy named John that had no feeling to it. So let me break this down and let me work on this technique that I shared earlier and show you how we can do this. So the first sentence here was the manager speaking to John. He says, hi, John, I wanted to tell you how impressive your work on the project was. And what you can do is try to emphasize some of these describing words and action words. So here's an example. You can emphasize the word impressive. Because if you're going to use impressive, it should sound impressive. Wow. And so you emphasize impressive with a sincere and slightly enthusiastic tone to show much it, it stood out. Like this was a great deal. So do this with me. Hi, John. I wanted to tell you how impressive your work on the project was. Now that sounds like, John, I'm really proud of you. And that's what you need to do is add that feeling. John's response was, thank you. I'm really proud of how it turned out. Not thank you. I'm really proud of how it turned out. No, be proud. So emphasize proud with, you know, putting a little more enthusiasm into it and, and make your voice go up, make your intonation go up to show that John's, happy about this, really proud about this. So again, thank you. I'm really proud of how it turned out. So by emphasizing a describing word, proud, you can make this happen with feeling. The manager responds, you should be. The way you manage the team was outstanding. Ah, so if you can emphasize the action word managed with some kind of tone of, you approve of this. You have a tone of approval. And then emphasize outstanding with energy to reinforce this praise <laughs> for John. You should be. The way you managed the team was outstanding. Now that's feeling. That's communication. John then says, it wasn't easy at times, but I'm glad the team stayed so focused now, here's a great opportunity to emphasize focused. And when you do that, you highlight the team's commitment with kind of a calm and reflective tone about this. Like you're thinking back on it, thinking, yeah, they were really focused. That adds real feeling to this. The manager then responds, yes. And your attention to detail really improve the final outcome. And here you can emphasize detail and improve and be strong about it. Have a firm tone to show the value of John's contributions. You try it. Yes, and your attention to detail really improve the final outcome. And then John responds to the manager and he says, I'm just happy that we were able to deliver such a successful project on time. And again, here you can emphasize deliver as an action word and, and successful as a describing word with pride and, and reflect the achievement that took place here. I'm just happy that we were able to deliver such a successful project on time. 
And then the manager responds to John and says, absolutely. The client was thrilled with the results. And they've already asked us to start planning the next phase. Well, here, the great describing word is thrilled. <laughs> They're so enthusiastic about this. So emphasize thrilled with a lot of enthusiasm to show how positively the, the client reacted to this news. And then finally, John's response is, that's great to hear. I'm looking forward to getting started on the next phase. As you go through this, your voice can go up as you talk about great to hear. And then just express excitement and, and, and a, some kind of forward looking tone on next phase to really get this feeling of everything's coming together so well right now. Now let me give you this conversation again with feeling. Are you ready? So the manager starts and he says, Hi, John. I wanted to tell you how impressive your work on the project was. John, thank you. I'm really proud of how it turned out. The manager then says, You should be. The way you managed the team was outstanding. John responds, It wasn't easy at times, but I'm glad the team stayed so focused. To which the manager says, yes, and your attention to detail really improved the final outcome. John responds, I'm just happy that we were able to deliver such a successful project on time. And his manager says, absolutely. The client was thrilled with the results, and they've already asked us to start planning the next phase. To which John says, that's great to hear. I'm looking forward to getting started on the next phase. <laughs> now, that's entirely different than when I read that crazy conversation with no feeling. So again, to summarize, here's what you want to do. If you want to speak with some feeling in your voice, one way to do that is to focus on emphasizing two things. First, emphasize words that describe things adjectives. Second, emphasize action words, which would be verbs. And when you're able to just emphasize those two things and get your voice to have a little bit more emotion, you don't have to be an actor or an actress. Just emphasize these words. Give them a little oomph. And when you do that, you'll start speaking with feeling. And when you start speaking with feeling, you start speaking with confidence. Tell me in the comments how this works for you. I want to hear about it. Are you a robot? Or can you speak with feeling? Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, share your comments, and I also invite you to learn your Business English Confidence Score. You'll find the link in the description below this video.